Hello everybody and welcome to a new video on this channel. Today I'm going to show you how to cross-correlate two signals in GNU Octave. Cross-correlation is a very important signal processing um, technique uh, to determine, for example, the, the delay between two signals. So imagine you have two signals, one signal and the delayed version of the other signal. And you want to uh, calculate the delay between the two signals. So you could have, for example, two microphones and you have a sound source somewhere in, 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 in space. And the sound waves will uh, arrive at the two microphones at different times. And you maybe want to calculate what is the time difference of arrival. And that is what, for example, the cross correlation can do for you. So we will directly head over to our workspace and start with clear all, close all and CLC. Clearing all workspace variables, closing all maybe opened windows and clearing the command window here. So um, I think we will exactly code what I just mentioned. So we generate a signal and we generate a delayed version of the signal and then uh, let's use the uh, cross correlation to calculate the delay between the two signals. So um, for signals we could use pulses. So um, we have a pulse length, so the length of, of the pulse, let's say 10. That's 10. So we create a pulse by initializing the vector uh, with th zeros. Let's say the overall signal, so the pulse itself and the, the rest of the signal um, is 100 and we say that the first 10 samples so 1 to 10 are 1 now we've created the pulse we can have a look at the pulse I will just uh, plot it here and X X label is samples and Y label again amplitude amplitude and we turn on the grid to make the plot look nicer so let's fire it up and i have to show it to you so let me switch to the figure so yeah here we have our generated pulse so we have an overall signal length of 100 samples and the first 10 samples are one and the other 90 samples are zero this is a pulse so and now we want to create a signal which is a delayed version of this signal here. So we, we move this pulse here to the right and in front of the pulse there will be zeros and this will be the delay. And then we use the cross correlation to determine the delay between the two signals. So let's go back to workspace. Okay, so we have created our pulse and now we will create our shifted version. So let's define a shift. Let's say the, the shifted version will be our signal X shifted by 12 samples. Okay, so we create Y. In the same way as we created X, we create a vector of zeros with the same length, so 100 samples at all filled up with zeros and then we insert our 10 ones to create the pulse but this time we have to think about that we now have a shift so we we start with our ones at shift plus one because shift is our delay so the first 12 samples will be zero and the 13th uh, sample will be one so that's why we have here to add the one so that we start at the 13th um, sample and then we go up to shift plus n so we go from 12 plus 10 from from 13 to um, 23 so okay now we've created our shifted version so let's plot both signals against each other each other and uh, therefore you can use the, can use the subplot so we can align to plot windows 
stack to each other. So we give this subplot two rows. That's why I add here two and one column. And we plot here our signal X. Again, X label will be samples. Y label will be, for example, the amplitude because this could be uh, X and Y could be, for example, audio um, uh, signals arriving at uh, two microphones. And give it a title. Original signal. So this could, for example, be our left speaker. So, and then we plot our delayed version, which could be our white speaker. And here we have to tell the subplot command, hey, we are now plotting in the second window. So plot Y, again, X label, we label it with samples. Y label will be amplitude. And we turn on the grid because the plot looks nicer. And the title will be shifted signal again the signal is shifted by 12 samples so we can fire it up oh i made a failure uh, here sorry 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 i forgot to set here the samples from 13 sample to 23 samples uh, to one because we want to generate the pulse it's the same like we did it here where we set the first 10 samples to one and here we set the um, uh, samples from 13 to 23 to one because this signal here is shifted by 12 samples so again let's fire it up yeah and i will show it to you so here it is here we have our two generated signals again in the upper plot, we see our original signal, a pulse with length 10, 10 samples on. And then uh, in the uh, lower plot, we see our um, original signal shifted by 10 samples, uh, 12 samples, sorry. And so now we want to use the cross correlation to determine this shift here. Because this is what the cross correlation can do for you. And again, this could be two signals arriving at different points. Like I already mentioned, we have, for example, two microphones and we have a sound source in space. And the sound source is um, um, radiating an audio file, music. And for example, the left speaker uh, could be this signal and uh, the right speaker, uh, which is in a certain distance to the left speaker, gets the signal a little bit later. And this time delay, or in the li li uh, literature it's called time difference of arrival, um, we now will determine using the cross correlation. So, okay, let's go back to the workspace and do it. So, okay, to, to use the cross correlation in Octave, you have to load the signal package. Loading packages in Octave is quite easy by typing package load and then the package name, in that case signal. So you have to install the signal package to load it because you need it because there is a the cross correlation function built in. And the cross correlation, I call it R uh, um, because this uh, letter is used in literature and we call it RXY. This means that we calculate the cross correlation between X and Y. If we, for example, would calculate the autocorrelation of X, we would type RXX. This is a nice um, naming for the variables. So, and then it's just the X core command and we pass Y and X to the command. That's it. So X core is calculating the cross correlation for us. And then we again plot the result. So figure, um, let's um, plot it also in a subplot because it looks nicer to see um, both signals 
uh, and the cross correlation result. So I will just copy the code from above and instead of using a two row subplot, we create a three row subplot just by changing two here to three and add our third plot window, <coughs> which will be the correlation result. So we plot here subplot 3.1.3, 3. again, uh, one because we have only one column, three because we have three plot windows. And this three here means, oh, we are not plotting in the third window. And then we plot R, X, Y. And uh, here's something special about the cross correlation function. Um, if you type it like like this, uh, it will return the cross correlation output. And you can also have a look at the legs. I call it the legs because what the cross correlation is um, uh, calculating. Um, oh, Alexa got triggered. Um, what the cross correlation is calculating is um, uh, at which um, shifts the signals are similar and so the cross correlation will output a vector called legs that is it's the x-axis for our plot that is indicating us these shifts and then we will see a maximum at that sample uh, where we have the um, uh, where the signals are similar where they correlate with each other and this should be at uh, the point of our shift that we've created 12. So after 12 samples there should be a, uh, a peak uh, indicating us hey at uh, here uh, the signals correlate so um, they are shifted to each other by 12 samples and to um, directly see this delay or this lag um, uh, the cross correlation function if you type it like this here uh, with two output um, elements then it will also give you a vector with the legs in it because they could be shifted that y is um, shifted by 12 samples to the right or it could also be shifted to the left so um, this is why legs will be positive and negative but you will see it in a second so we plot our x-axis legs against our cor a cross correlation result then we name our axis x label we call it legs because these are the uh, time shifts and the y label will be the amplitude. Oh, let's name it R, X, Y, then it's, it's clearer. Then we turn on the grid because the plot looks nicer and the title will be cross correlation between X and Y. So let's fire it up. So, okay, I will show you the plot window in a second. So here it is, here we have the output. So again, as we can see, we have in the first plot, we have our original signal as a pulse with the length of 12 samples. Then in, in the second plot, we have the shifted version of our original signal shifted by 12 samples. And now in the third plot, we see the cross correlation. So that point where the two signals correlate with each other, there will be a peak like we see it here. And this peak will be at th that sample according to the shift. So we have a shift of 12 here. So the peak here will be at sample number 12. Let's have a look if I'm right and zoom in. Yes. And we can see our peak is at 12, indicating us, hey, the signals are shifted 12 samples to each other. If we, for example, would shift Y to the left instead to the right, like we did it here, then our peak would be at minus 12. That is why the output of the cross correlation function, the vector legs that we plotted, um, contains positive and negative values. Yeah, this is how you can determine the delay between or the shift between two signals. Yeah, I hope you like this video. Give me a thumbs up and see you the next time. Bye bye.